I've been playing in Shrouded. You've been playing in Shrouded. Maybe. A lot of people have been playing in Shrouded. But what nobody is doing is making a full list of tips to help guide new players and even returning players learn new things about the game and enhance their experience in multiple ways. Let me cook, all right? This is gonna be my guide to Enshrouded and all of the tips and tricks that I wish I knew before I started, in no particular order. Let us begin. First things first, don't sweat your character build. Choose whatever class seems interesting and just go for it. In the early game, you get bombarded with a ton of loot to help you get started and honestly, your build doesn't really start to take shape until level like six to 10 anyway. So you've got time, just don't overthink it. Attached to that, tip number two, you can respec your build at any time at a flame altar for like just 10 runes every time you do it. The price never goes up. That's like one hunter's bow. Easy clap. Now about runes. Now, tip number three might seem obvious to some people, but I think it's still worth mentioning. Pick up every single weapon that you come across. All of them. Now, I know you have limited inventory space, and you're thinking, but JT, you're so handsome and smart and knowledgeable, and I mean, I can only carry so much. I don't want to fill my backpack with useless items. So don't, salvage them right away and turn them into those nice shiny runes. It'll save your backpack and your skin later when you're trying to upgrade your weapons in the later game. Tip number four, nighttime is scary, just like real life. It's dark and spooky, so always bring a torch with you. Oh, you thought that was it? No, no, no. If you're ever out mining or gathering resources while the sun is going down, but you don't want to head back to camp just yet like the stubborn little loot gremlin that you are, you can actually drop your torch on the ground and it'll illuminate the area around you. Tip number four and a half, you can also use a wisp of light and it'll do the same thing. Tip number five, if you aren't super into building mega structures for your base or want something that feels homey without having to spend a ton of time and brain power playing interior designer, drop a flame altar at one of the many abandoned buildings around the map that is to your liking and then all you'll have to do is patch some holes in the walls, maybe fix a roof, and then you'll have a fully fledged homestead for about 10% of the effort. My buddy and I are actually working on renovating an entire town and turning that into our base right now. So if you'd like to see more of that, there'll be a video coming about that later, or you can come check out that progress live on my Twitch channel. Link to that down below. Now this isn't like a proper tip, maybe, but if you wanna level up quicker and get more skill points to really start filling out your build more quickly, there are a couple great ways to do that. Number one being mining. I know it's kind of lame, but mining actually gives a pretty decent amount of XP, especially considering how easy it is to do. It's also pretty necessary for crafting some gear sets. So don't shy away from a trip to the shafts. Huh? Wait. Number two would be chopping down all of the shroud roots that you can see on your map or have access to based on the strength of your flame. Each time you do this, for the first time, and I'm reiterating this because if I know if I say each time you do this, People are gonna be upset in the comments telling me that I lied, and that I don't know anything, and that I need to go upgrade my glider. Each time you chop down a shroud root, a new one, for the first time, you earn a skill point. And especially if you've missed a couple of these in earlier zones, you can come back and it's a really easy farm if you're trying to snag an extra one or two points for that next perk. Number three would be literally to just explore. Literally. Discovering new locations grants anywhere from like 100 to 1500 XP. That's seriously a lot. It's also the whole point of the game. Explore, see the sights, and discover new caves, ruins, and cities all over Embervale. It's a pretty good time. All right, now that my numbering is all over the place, we went one through five and then one through three. Let's just say we're at tip number 24 to make it seem like I have more tips. Tip number 24, upgrade your tools, your pickaxe and your woodcutting axe. Seriously, the difference it makes in this game is astronomical. I was just rocking a stone pickaxe for the longest because it seemed like it worked. And dude, I'm talking not only just being able to collect higher tier materials, but you will collect in some cases like three to four times the amount of the materials. It seriously made a huge difference in endgame, especially with some of the crafting we were doing. Tip number 25, all weapons and tools have durability, but fixing them is super easy. All you have to do to repair a sword, wand, pickaxe, or even a torch is just walk up to your workbench and interact with it. That's it. Simply opening the menu will instantly repair every item in your inventory. Good as new. You can also find repair benches out in the world if you're on a little bit longer of an adventure and you can't quite go back to your base just yet. 
typically found in scavenger camps. They kind of look like an anvil meets an ironing board. But yeah, they're literally a gift from the gods. Tip number 26, food is whittle pretty important. It genuinely is the difference between a particular dungeon or task being easy and impossible. From constitution buffs that will give you considerably more health to damage buffs and increasing your stamina and its regeneration rate, it really does make a noticeable difference in certain builds and their viability. To tag along with this, cooking food is a large part of this. Whether it's just turning raw meat into edible meat, or crafting full-blown sous, stoops, sandwiches, teas, and more. I'm editing this right now, and I genuinely can't believe that I just said sous and stoops. It's supposed to be stews and soups. Anyway, enjoy. The more complicated the food item, while they require more time and effort to make, they offer all of that time and effort back and then some in the value and strength of the buffs that they offer. Oh yes, I have another tip that I might get yelled at for. Okay, so using magic chests is like really important and all, but sometimes using regular chests has its value as well. Like if you have a limited resource and you don't want to accidentally use it to craft something else while you're waiting for the other ingredient to finish crafting so you don't have to go back out and farm that material again, that's probably not easily farmable or accessible to you. And now you just throw off the entire day's work that you're putting into this armor set. You can just put it into a non-magic chest and it can't be pulled by any of your craftsmen at your base. Maybe that's simple of me, but I think it's pretty wicked. So yeah, all right, where were we? Uh, let's see, number 24, upgrade your tools. Number 25, durability, 26, food. Uh, we talked about chests. Ah yes, our last tip. Play the game and enjoy it for what it is. Try things, build things, explore the world. And if you find something that you don't like, tell the developers. Reach out to them, submit a bug report. The game is in early access for a reason. The team at Keen Games seems like a really dedicated dev team, and they're actively looking for feedback from all of us. Don't just complain about it to your friends on Twitter. Yeah, it's Twitter, not X. Always will be. Or in the YouTube comments of people who are just trying their best. Be a part of the solution by helping the developers fix and improve the game so that you can have a better experience moving forward. Thank you guys for watching. If you made it to the end, clearly you appreciated the video, so it would mean the world if you could like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and comment down below any tips that you think I missed. Have a great rest of your day, and as always, keep creating, keep innovating, and happy gaming.